Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meer Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve problem sum based on accounting of transaction of foreign currency under the subject financial accounting for TYBMS SEM 5. Okay, a very important and a very simple topic. This entire topic is uh, based on journal entries. Okay, now for many uh, journal entry it, uh, becomes a bit tedious, but now I have made a check code for it. So basically in this entire chapter, you'll only have to learn uh, three types of journal entries. Okay, only three entries basically. And based on those three entries, I can guarantee you all can solve any kind of sum. Okay. So now first, let us see which are those journal entries and then we will take up one sum in order to understand how to solve that particular problem. Okay, now for accounting of transaction of foreign currency, remember the sum can be in two ways, either from the exporter's point of view or the importer's point of view, okay. So it depends, if you are an exporter, you have three different journal entries, if you are an importer, you have three different journal entries, okay. But on the similar line, so now you look at here carefully. Uh, if you are an exporter, exporter means seller and if you are an importer, it means you are a purchaser, okay. The very first entry will always be, if you are an exporter, you will always sell on credit basis so your entry will be party account debit to export sale if you are a purchase i go to purchase a debit word comes in so import purchase account debit to party so it's just a reverse entry if it's a sale is party to sales if it is purchase it is purchase to party that's the very first journal entry that you'll need to remember second if you are going to sell okay the second one if you are selling you will receive amount and if you are purchasing you'll have to pay the amount Okay, so for the seller, it will become amount received and for importer, it will be amount paid. So always remember whenever you're receiving or whenever you're making a payment, there can be two uh, conditions. Okay, either you can make gain or you can incur losses. Okay, because foreign exchange may, there is something called as a foreign exchange fluctuating account, meaning the rate keeps on changing. So if you're purchased for less and if you're paying more, it can become a loss. If you are purchased for more and if you are paying less, it can become gain. Same way, if you are sold for a higher price and if you are receiving a lesser rate, you will have a loss. And if you are sold for a, a lesser rate and if you are getting higher rate, it can become a gain. So two ways may your entry can become. So if you are going to receive the amount, always remember bank will be debited. Okay, bank will become debited. FEF, let's just keep a note. If it is a loss, FEF will always be on the debit side, no matter uh, whether you are an importer or an exporter. If loss, FEF is always on the debit side. If it is a gain, FEF is always be on the credit side. In amount received, it will become bank to FEF, uh, bank to party, bank to party, and FEF will come based on the gain or loss. And if it is amount paid, it will always be party to bank because making the payment. Okay, the bank will be credited always, and party will always be debited. So that's the second thing. First is purchase sales. Second is either amount received or amount paid. Third is a com you know is a common entry for both of them. It is called as the transfer entry, which is always be at the end of the sum on 31st March. Okay, if it is a gain, now remember for gain FEF was always on the credit side. So when you will transfer, it will become debit side. So it will become FEF to PNL. Loss was always on the debit side, and if you transfer it, it will become on the credit side. So it will become PNL to FEF, and it is same for both the parts of the sum okay whether if you are an importer or an exporter okay now we are going to take up the very first sum which will be based on importer okay so first sum we are going to solve which will be based on importer in the next video okay we will solve a sum if uh, from the exporter's point of view because this is very important from the importer's point of view so let us so let us see let us see how to solve the sum based on import purchase okay the question is a limited imported goods from star company worth 1 lakh 50 thousand on 1st december 2018 when the exchange rate was 60 per dollar the amount to be paid in installments and then they have given us the four installment with the different rates and different amount so 60 40 plus 20 60 60 plus 60 120 and 120 plus 30 is 150 so it is matching to this amount a limited closes the books on 31st March every year and on 31st March 19 the rate 31st March ka rate is given pass the journal entry of the above transaction. Now very first thing since it is an import import means purchase our very first journal entry will always be purchase of goods. 
So let us start working out number one. We are purchasing one lakh fifty thousand dollars on first December two thousand eighteen when the rate was sixty. So in order to show it down. A limited imported meaning purchased on first December two thousand eighteen one lakh fifty thousand dollars at the rate of sixty. When you multiply them, we will get the amount as ninety lakh. That's our first entry. Ka working note one lakh fifty thousand dollars at the rate of sixty multiplied. We got the total amount. So my first journal entry will be your purchasing. Purchase me goods are coming in. Debit card comes in. So import purchase account to party. Party ka name is Star Company. So our very first journal entry on first December two thousand eighteen will be import purchase account debit to Star Company ninety lakhs each being goods purchased on credit. Okay, always we will start with the purchase or sale. Now this is purchase, so we let us talk only about the purchase point. So we'll always start with the purchase very first entry. Now four installments are there, so now we have to start passing the pay entry. Now the very first installment was on thirty first December two thousand eighteen. For twenty thousand dollar, when the exchange rate was sixty, okay. So on thirty first December eighteen, we are going to make a payment because we are purchased. We are going to make a payment of twenty thousand dollar at the rate of sixty. We multiplied it. We got the value of twelve lakhs. Okay. Once we do that, the next thing what you have to always search is whenever you're making the payment or whenever you're going to receive the money. Okay. Uh, in case of uh, export, always remember whenever. The payment or receive the entry will come. We always have to check whether there is a gain or a loss in that particular transaction. So now let us see how you can do that. Always remember whatever rate you are going to make the payment. Always compare that with the original rate or that is the rate in which you had purchased in this case. So in order to find the gain or loss, the purchase rate was sixty, and the payment rate was also sixty. So in that in this case there is no fluctuation in the currency rate. Therefore, purchase rate is equal to payment rate. Therefore, there is no gain, no loss. Okay. So if there is no gain, no loss, we need to make the payment debit the receiver. So it will be Star Company to bank money going out. Okay. So my second entry, thirty first December, Star Company account debit to bank twelve lakhs. Twelve lakhs will be the value. Okay. Being first installment paid. So we are done with the first part. Now let us start with the second installment. Second installment was on fifteen Jan nineteen, forty thousand dollars at the rate of sixty two. So on fifteen Jan nineteen, we are making a payment of forty thousand dollars at the rate of sixty two. Multiply, we got the value as twenty four lakh eighty thousand. Once we get that, check for gain and loss. Now our original purchase rate was at sixty, and we are making the payment at sixty two rupees. Okay, purchase rate is sixty. We are making the payment of sixty-two, meaning our purchase is less than the payment. Payment is more. If the payment is more, we are making extra payment, meaning it is a loss for us. Loss of two rupees, sixty and sixty-two. The difference is two rupees into the number of dollars that we are making the payment, forty thousand. So two into forty, eighty thousand ka loss. Now remember, whenever there is a loss, FBF is always debited. So my payment entry will be to whom I need to make the payment star to debit my star the so star account debit F E F account debit because F E F is a loss to bank account so star account debit F E F account debit to bank bank may always note down the payment amount twenty four lakh eighty thousand the loss was eighty thousand and the difference whatever you will get will come to your star company which comes to twenty four lakhs being second installment paid and loss incurred. So we are done with the first installment and second installment. Now we'll jump to the third one. Working remains the same. Okay, again on third, fifteen Feb, sixty thousand dollar at the rate of fifty nine. So we are going to make a payment on fifteen Feb, sixty thousand dollar at the rate of fifty nine. We multiply, we got thirty five lakh forty thousand. Next, we need to check whether there is a loss or a gain. Again, we compare with the original purchase price, which was sixty. We purchased for sixty, but now we are making a payment of only fifty nine. So here we are basically gaining one rupee. Okay, your purchase rate is more than your payment rate, so we are gaining one rupee. One rupee into sixty thousand, which comes to sixty thousand itself. Now, if it is a gain, always remember gain will always be on the credit side. So my entry will be star account debit debit to bank to F E F. 
ओके स्टार अकाउंट डेबिट टू बैंक टू एफ एफ बैंक में विल राइट द वैल्यू थर्टी फाइव लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड इन गेन वी राइट सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सो वी एड अप बोथ दिस वैल्यू एंड दैट बिकम योर स्टार कंपनी का अमाउंट बींग थर्ड इंस्टॉलमेंट पेड एंड गेन मेड और गेन इन कर्ड ओके so we are done with the third installment now we check the fourth one now fourth installment is on 15th april now april will come in the next year because 31st march is the year ending because it's mentioned there a limited closes the book on 31st march year end so this april comes in the next year so we cannot use that we are not making the payment right now okay so now remember this whenever year end comes whenever there is a year end and if there is any balance which is going to take place in the next year we need to find only whether you are making a loss or a gain as on today's date that is 31st march date for the balance okay meaning whatever payment you're going to make in the next year if i would have to make the payment today itself then what would be your standing whether you are in gain or loss only that we need to note down so look at this working very carefully okay on 31st march is the year end if balance payment was made on the same date on 31st march and if you are going to make the payment of 30000 dollar at the rate of 63 now 31st march ka rate is 63 okay so if we would be making the payment uh, on 31st march whether we are incurring a gain or loss that we need to find okay so purchase rate was 60 and the payment rate if we would would be make on 31st march it would have been 63 63 is more than 60 meaning it is still a loss It would be a loss of three rupees into thirty thousand, which comes to ninety thousand. So on thirty first March, okay, before transferring all the losses or gain, we need to first check if there is any balance, and if there is any balance available, only find the gain or loss on that particular date. So ninety thousand ka loss, so loss me F E F is always debited, so it will be F E F account debit two star company on thirty first March, ninety thousand. Okay, there was only one installment which was supposed to happen in the next year. Okay, so that's the entry for it. Okay, now last entry for the first year. Okay, now on thirty first March we need to close this account. So for closing the account, now check for a loss or uh, and the gains. Okay, first installment there was no loss, no gain. In the second installment there was a loss of eighty thousand. In the third installment there was a gain of sixty thousand, and there is again a loss of ninety thousand. So loss is greater. So we have one lakh seventy thousand ka loss and sixty thousand ka gain. If I set it off, I still get a loss of one lakh ten thousand. That is one lakh seventy thousand minus sixty thousand comes to one lakh ten thousand. So one lakh ten thousand ka loss I need to transfer. Now loss is always debited. I mean F E F is always debited. So whenever you're going to transfer, it becomes credit. So it will become P N L account debit to F E F. One lakh ten thousand. One lakh ten thousand. With this, our uh, first year ka working or journal entry comes to end. End. Okay, this is first year ka journal entry. Now let us go ahead with the second year. Now this is very important. Okay, very very important for the second. Whenever you are going to start with the second year ka data. Now, on second year, fifteenth April, go. You are making a transaction of thirty thousand dollar at the rate of sixty five. So on fifteenth April, we are going to make thirty thousand at the rate of sixty five, which comes to nineteen lakh fifty thousand. Now everyone, look at this very. Uh, listen, listen and look at this very carefully. Okay. Whenever we go to the next year, whenever we need to find the gain and loss, now we cannot compare with the original purchase rate. We cannot compare with this rate. Once we switch the year, the thirty first March rate will become your original rate. Okay, that will become your base rate, and everything will go and compared with the base rate. Okay, so gain and loss के लिए the year end rate was sixty three, and we are making a payment at the rate of sixty five. So again, your payment is more than the base, so we are going to incur a loss of two rupees, two into thirty, that is sixty thousand ka loss. So always remember, in the next year, whenever we switch the year, the thirty first rate will become the base for the next year. Okay, the original year ke liye, whatever is the purchase rate, that becomes your base. But whenever you switch a year, whenever you go ahead of the next year, the thirty first rate will become the year rate. Okay, so there is a loss of sixty. So let us make the entry for payment. Payment me. Debit the receiver, so it will become star account debit. It's a loss, so F E F account debit to bank. Star account debit F E F to bank. Bank may be right nineteen fifty. Loss is sixty. The difference comes to your star account. There's no more entry. That's it. So on now we just transfer one loss of this year sixty thousand. So on thirty first March twenty twenty, 
FEF is debit, so we transferred from credit, so it will come PNL account debit to FEF sixty thousand. With that, we were able to complete both the years' ka journal entry from this particular quest. Okay, the sum is very simple. You just have to remember those three journal entry and this simple working note. Okay, chalo. I hope everyone have understood how to solve the sum based on import purchase. Okay, chalo. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.